This is a short presentation to discuss the survivor benefits for both active and retired members of the police and firemen's retirement system. As with all of our presentations, this is simply meant to be a general overview. If you require more specific information, please visit our website or contact our office. The information on survivor benefits can be found in the PFRS handbook. During this presentation, you will hear the term final compensation several times. If you were in Tier 1, your final compensation is the salary in the 12 months preceding retirement or your death as an active member. If you were in Tier 2 or Tier 3, which means that you were enrolled after May 21st of 2010, it's the average salary of the three highest years, highest years preceding retirement or your death as an active member. There are two separate types of survivor benefits that will be payable upon the death of an active or retired police and fire member. There is a monthly survivor pension paid to a specific family member, and there is also an a group life insurance benefit that can be paid to anyone. These are simply some definitions of different terms that you will hear during during this presentation. For spouse or civil union partner, this is the person to whom you were either married or partnered with at the time of your death. For children, it means your unmarried child under the age of 18 or 18 years of age of older and still enrolled in high school, or if they are incapacitated because of a mental or physical disability. Parent means parent who is, relieve, who is receiving at least one half of support from you in the 12 months preceding your death. For an active member, upon your death, the surviving spouse or partner is eligible to receive a pension benefit equal to 50% of your final compensation. This is a lifetime benefit which will continue until their death or until such time as they remarry or enter into a new civil union partnership. If there is no surviving spouse or partner, we can also pay to eligible children. If there are three or more children, we will split 50% between them. If there are two or more, if there are two, we'll split 35% between them. And if there is one eligible child or child, we will give them 20% of the final compensation. In the event that there is no surviving spouse, partner, or children, a pension can be paid to eligible parents as follows. If there are two eligible parents, we can split 40% of final compensation between them. If there's only one eligible parent, we can give them 25% of the final compensation. If there are no eligible survivors at all, the employee's contributions will be returned to the named beneficiary or to the member's estate. There is also an accidental death benefit, which means that you died as a result of an accident during the performance of your regular or assigned duties, and that death is not the result of willful negligence. Your family may be entitled to the accidental death benefit. For this benefit, regardless of what tier you're in, the final compensation is the final 12 months before your accident which led to your death. With the accidental death benefit, the eligible surviving spouse or partner is paid an annual pension of 70% of the final compensation. This is a lifetime benefit to the surviving spouse or partner, which continues even if they remarry or enter into a new partnership. If there is no eligible surviving spouse or partner, we can also pay to eligible children. Again, it's 50% split between three or more, it's 35% between two, and 20% of final compensation to one child. For the accidental death benefit only, well, the definition of child may, may also mean an unmarried child under the age of 24 who is enrolled in college in a degree program for at least 12 hours of credit per semester. As with a regular death, the accidental death benefit can be paid to surviving parents in the same way as the regular death benefit. And again, if there were no survivors, only the contributions would be paid to the estate or the named beneficiaries. The death benefit for retired members is very similar to the death benefit for active members. Upon the death of a retired member, the surviving spouse or partner is eligible to receive a pension benefit equal to 50% of the final compensation. This benefit once again continues until their death or until they enter into a new civil union partnership or they remarry. 
in addition, on a retired death, if there are eligible children, they can be paid 15% to one eligible child or 25% to two or more eligible children in addition to the surviving spouse or partner's benefit. In the same way as with the act of death benefit, if there's no surviving spouse or partner, there there is eligibility for surviving children. 50% to three or more, 35% to two, or 20% of final compensation to one eligible child. In addition to the survivor pension benefits payable, there is also a group life insurance benefit payable upon the death of an active or retired police and fire member. For active members, that is a three and a half times the final compensation benefit payable. For our retired members, it is generally half of the final compensation, except in, in the event of a disability retirement where if death occurs under age 55, it is going to be three and a half times the final compensation. It is very important to keep in mind when thinking about the group life insurance benefit that this is not automatically paid to a surviving spouse, partner, child, or parent. When you are enrolled in police and fire, you are automatically set up with a beneficiary of your estate. You can go on the emboss system and then you can set up your beneficiaries on there. You can change beneficiaries on there. That can be changed at any time and does not have to go to a spouse or partner. When you file for retirement, you will name new beneficiaries, perhaps the same ones, perhaps different ones. Again, after retirement, they can be changed. It's very important to keep in mind that any time there's a change in family status, that you make sure that we have your updated beneficiary information for your group life insurance so that the right person gets paid upon your death. As I mentioned at the outset, you can go in the PFRS handbook or look at Fact Sheet 19 for more information about survivor benefits or visit our website. Thank you very much for listening.